today we are at a beautiful dive site behind me. Uh, just a little rock, extra points if you can guess where we are, put that in the comments. But I get asked this question all the time is how do you find dive sites? How do you know where on a dive site to go? Um, how do you do that safely? What kind of equipment do you need? How do you pump tanks? All of these questions we get asked all the time and I thought today was a perfect opportunity to address those questions and to encourage you to go out there and just explore more and add some of your own dive sites onto the map. So first off we're going to talk about how do we find a dive site. Really same as you, you know we can find it on the internet, uh, there's lots of forums out there, there's lots of blogs out there. Uh, we have a lot on our website as well. What we really look for first is the GPS, but the GPS can always be a little bit off. So after getting the GPS, we look at the map. Uh, we use Navionics, which is a marine map, and you can actually see the depths, but it's not always so accurate. So a lot of times what we end up doing with Sylphia is just strafing back and forth, and we look for those jumps in depths uh, beneath the boat because that means that there's some sort of structure beneath us and fish love structure. They love structure because that might mean it's a balmy or maybe it's a wall or a wreck, something where they can hide behind or a lot of times it's just current flowing through the structure which sharks love as well because it helps them breathe. So if we're not gonna look for the uh, jump in depth, um, we also use our dive dinghy. That'll actually show us the bottom topography like a 3D map. It's a great way to find uh, wrecks, especially to see that jump really quick. And then of course, just talking to people, word of mouth. Every time that we're heading to a new area, we're not shy, we put it out there, like who knows where the good dive sites in this area. Uh, talk to your local dive shops, join local forums, um, and find buddies that have a little bit of knowledge as to where you should go. So we're gonna talk about what kind of training you should have if you're gonna go out there and dive on your own. Uh, a lot of divers just go with dive companies uh, and that's okay, that's, that's great. If you go diving once a year, you're on a dive trip, dive vacation, uh, do that, do exactly that. But if you are now like, hey, I want to dive off the beach and I want to like explore a little bit more, just me and my partner, um, then here's the kind of training you need. Would recommend advance, but furthermore, I would recommend to have the underwater navigation specialty. That's really going to teach you as to how to read underwater as you're going. You're going to learn about using a compass, how to find direction and how to follow that compass to make sure you get back to the boat. Uh, you're going to learn about looking at the bottom topography, whether that's a sloping reef or when you pass that balmy, you know that where it is or just simply keeping the wall on a wall dive on one side of you and then turning around and keeping it on your other side of you. Using the position of the sun above you to help know which way is east and west. All of this is very important because the most important thing I can tell you about diving by yourself is getting back to where you started, getting back to the boat. So it's really important that you're paying attention underwater, that you're not watching a turtle and then you just get so turned around watching this turtle that all of a sudden you look around and realize you don't know what weighs what. So definitely underwater navigation is huge. If you're really gonna be out there on your own bow away from everybody, I highly recommend maybe getting your rescue diver certificate. That's gonna give you the confidence that you know that if there was to be any sort of situation that would arise that you uh, would keep calm and know how to handle that. That's everything from first aid to how to administer oxygen if it happened to be some sort of emergency with decompression illness or otherwise known as the bends. I would also say night diving specialty. Uh, if you're going to be doing some night diving, you need to know how to do that safely. Those are the things that I would highly recommend for you to learn um, and take those classes so that you feel comfortable and confident uh, returning to the boat. Whenever I'm teaching people, new students, new crew members, uh, while I'm diving, even at the beginning stages, I always say, hey, do you know where the boat is? And I look for them to start pointing it out because it's a really important thing to learn early on that you need to know where you just came from. Diving by yourself and doing it safely, it really just starts with a good buddy check. Just remember, it's just you and your friends out there. And so many problems underwater can be fixed before you even get in the water with a good buddy check. So that's the begin with review and friends. You're going to check their BCD, their regulators, their weights. You're going to be checking enough that they have enough air and then a final okay. 
do it, do it every dive. Because so many times you're like, oh, they get down below and they didn't have enough air, like this regulator's not working or where's their weights. It's important that you guys do that for each other, keep each other safe. Uh, so some of the safety equipment that I really think that you need to be carrying as a diver or just have accessible is gonna be first and foremost, a dive flag. You're gonna to wanna to have that up so that if, in case there happens to be another dive boat or annoying jet skis or whatever might be in the vicinity, that they know you have a diver down and they're not zipping over the diver's heads. So put your dive flag up every single time. A lot of times we're hundreds of miles from the nearest human, but it's just a good habit to get into. So always just put that one up. Um, other than that, safety sausage, or which is known as a diver down flag or a surface marker you're gonna wanna make sure that you have that. Um, as far as equipment goes, that is the most important because that is gonna be your lifeline to making sure that your dinghy or the boat sees you. You have to understand that when you surface from the dive, if you don't come back to the boat, you are nothing more than just a little floating coconut and it's really hard to see. So you need to put this dive uh, flag up and it's about two meters safety sausage and that's gonna be a big beacon where finally that they can see and direct, okay? So I carry it on a reel if I'm on a dive and for whatever reason I know that it's not going as expected and I know that I'm not gonna be able to return to the boat, what I do is I put the flag up then and there. That way, the boat sees the flag early on and they see that I'm drifting away from the dive site, which is fine, and um, that they know where I'm gonna be popping up. Or I do it if it's like a, a normal dive and I feel like I'm coming up in the vicinity of where I expected or where they expected me to come up, I'll put it up on my safety stop. And all I do is you inflate it when you're on your safety stop, which is five meters down or 15 feet, inflate that on the reel, let it go to the surface, and then they see you with a three minute warning so that you're not waiting at the surface, waiting for them. Very important piece of equipment. The most important piece of equipment, I would say, is definitely that safety sausage. Other than that, what good is a safety sausage if you're not gonna have spotters looking for it? So don't just be willy-nilly about it and just be like, oh, I'm going diving, bye guys. You need to have make sure that you have somebody that they know it is their designated job to be looking out for you. I like to have a set time, okay? So that set time is gonna be, oh, if it's a deep dive, 30 minutes, a shallow dive, an hour, and they know around what time that they should be looking for my dive flag and what vicinity I believe I'll be popping up. So we keep them on the bow, we have binoculars, just making sure that they're looking out for you. And again, I'm gonna say compass. Well, we have compasses on our dive watches and really important that you do have that compass so it's really easy to get turned around, especially if you're doing like a blue water dive and you don't know which way is what. So very important that you have that compass. Uh, I would say lights. If you are diving anywhere near sunset, you need to make sure that you have a light on you. Because let's say that you pop up a little bit later or you drifted away and they didn't find you right away. That safety sausage is gonna be a lot easier to find if you put your dive light on it and it reflects off of that thing. So uh, try to have a light, especially if you're diving later on in the day. Uh, speaking of night diving, that is again another easy way to get turned around is night diving. So I would say get that night diving specialty if you're going to do that. But as far as finding your divers, it's actually easier to find divers on a night dive because it's like a floating beacon of light down there. You can just see this glow from far away. So it's actually very easy to find divers on a night dive. Now for me, there's many different ways that we can dive um, from Sylphia, and we try all of them. My favorite is actually to dive right off of Sylphia herself. Um, I would compare this to imagine getting geared up, walking on your back porch, and just jumping off for a dive. It's so much easier than to have to go in the dinghy, which is gonna be comparable to loading up all your gear in the car, taking it, and then have to unload out of your car. So. If at all possible, I try to dive off Sylphia. If we're on a mooring, we're on anchor, and we're on a dive site, awesome. If not, if the dive site seems to be a little bit sketchy, I'll do one of two things. I will anchor uh, or moor up Sylphia a little bit further from the dive site, and then we'll load up in the dinghy and take it closer. And or, my other favorite probably, is just to do a drift dive. So in that instance, we would take Sylphia, everybody would be geared up, be on the back of the boat, and as you're going, you would come close to the dive site or the rocks or whatever it happened to be, and then you turn her, you turn your stern out, everybody jumps off the back of the boat at the exact same time, and uh, they go for their dive, 
while Sylphia just kind of hovers around in the distance looking for that dive flag. And then once we see that dive flag, we return and we actually put a long stern line out and then I come around for the divers, they grab that stern line and then we safely get them back on the boat. Um, if you're gonna do that, there is a drift diving specialty. Highly recommend it, just so that you know how to do that safely because with drift diving, it's not like you can be like, oh, hand me this, hand me that, hand me my camera, hand me my mask. You have to be geared up, ready to go and make sure that you do good buddy checks so that you, um, so that you get in the water all at the same time. Additional equipment you're going to need is, of course, you're going to need to have your own dive gear. That's going to be obviously your own tanks, BCD, regs. You're going to need to have all of that, of course. But uh, what's not maybe not so obvious is to have a save a dive kit. Just nothing more than a little box. We like to have one both in the mothership, Sylphia, and as well as the dive dinghy. And this has saved our ass so many times. And it's going to be filled with things like mouthpieces, zip ties, hair ties, O-rings, and... Oh, any kind of clip or wrench, Allen key that you might need, any tool that's gonna be able to fix your equipment. Because nothing is worse than you get to a dive site, you're all ready to go diving, and then all of a sudden you realize that there's a problem with your equipment and you have to go all the way back, or even worse, skip the dive. So make sure you have all those things tucked away, ready to go. Uh, other than that, oxygen, highly recommend it. It's your first combatant against anything to do with decompression illness or um, the bends as they call it. So if somebody was to come up quickly or stay down and deco too long and if you think that they might have some sort of decompression illness, you put them on O2 right away. Or even if they're really feeling sick, it's just a good thing to have on board. So if you're gonna be off the map, have an oxygen kit for sure. And then of course, now we're gonna talk about compressor. How do we fill these tanks? How do you keep on diving? The compressor. It's true that you can just go to land and get your tanks filled from time to time uh, if you don't dive that often. But if you are going to dive often the way we do, have a good compressor. Uh, ours is a Bauer PE100, otherwise known as a Bauer Junior 2, I believe. And um, there's different models, diesel, petrol. Ours is electric, actually. And you need to know your compressor, inside and outside, and I mean that. So we change our, our filters and our oil diligently. And about every uh, 40 to 60 tanks, you're supposed to change the filter inside. We use a refillable filter, and we actually refill it with all of the um, elements that it needs to keep the air clean that we breathe. We like to do that so that we're not using a plastic one that you just dispose. That's usually what comes with it. If you check our website, you'll find out where you can find a refillable uh, one for our compressor or for many others as well. And then finally, you need to know how to fix it. Okay, we've had to actually rewire our compressor four times. Now, I would also admit that we use and abuse ours more than most. We'll pump tanks all day long, where usually a, probably a compressor of our size gets used to pump two or four tanks a day, or well, we'll pump 12, no problem. So know your compressor inside and out, and know how to use it and service it uh, religiously, because that's gonna keep you alive with good clean air to breathe underwater. Guys, I hope that that encourages you guys to go out there, explore more, find your own dive sites, name them, put them on the map, and share those with the community. That's the best part of diving, is exploratory diving. All these dive sites, somebody once upon a time jumped in and decided, hey, this is Bill's dive site. That could be you, you could be Bill, it could be your dive site. So get out there, dive more, and do it safely. I hope that this has been really helpful for you. If you've found or thought of anything that we didn't mention, some tips and tricks of your own, uh, don't be shy, put those in the comments. Uh, we'll go through those, we'll answer any questions that you might have about diving on your own. And lastly, if you're wondering about, hey, what kind of equipment do these guys use? What's some of this equipment that they're talking about? Uh, where do I buy it? That's all gonna be on our website, expeditiondrench.org. Uh, just look under brands we love and you'll find all of the dive gear that we use and uh, I highly recommend all of it. Thanks guys for watching and uh, have fun diving out there.